scientist. As far back as the 1920s, when he began as FBI director, Hoover had gone after persons like Marcus Garvey. Garvey's organization, the Universal Negro Improvement Association, had a membership numbering in the millions, and somehow Hoover found this threatening and worthy of surveillance and undermining attempts. Garvey's influence had been international and had drawn world attention to America's treatment of black people. Paul Robeson was another who was viewed by Hoover as an enemy. This reporter has personally examined thousands of FBI, CIA, and other U.S. government agency documents that were kept on Paul Robeson. Robeson, like Garvey, had an international audience at his command, and he used that platform to denounce racism in the United States. Most importantly, however, were the questions raised by the State Department as to my political opinion. Here's a question of whether one who wants to sing and act can have, as a citizen, political opinion. And uh, in attacking me, they suggested that when I was abroad, I spoke out against injustices to the Negro people in the United States. I certainly did. And the Supreme Court Justice just ruled, uh, Judge Warren, in the segregation cases, that world opinion had a lot to do with that uh, ruling, that our children, Negro children, can go to school like anybody else in the South. I'm very proud to have been a part of directing world opinion to precisely that condition. The second, that I fight for the independence of the colonial peoples of Africa. Uh, Bandung, the colored peoples of the world assembled, made it clear that nobody is going to tell them what to do. They're going to have the independence. I'm proud of that. When the 60s came, many factions of the civil rights movement had developed the same international perspective. Those of us uh, living in the United States who see ourselves as, and who are in fact, you know, descendants of the Africans who were brought to this country, who were enslaved, I mean, and who were rebelling and revolting now against our oppressive condition, and we are concerned about Africa. We see Africa as our motherland, and we feel that we have a responsibility to speak with as much passion as any other African on this issue. The United States government says that change must come in South Africa through peaceful means. That same government has over 500,000 troops in Vietnam fighting not white people, but brown Vietnamese. So it is small wonder that the civil rights movement was also subjected to heavy attack by Hoover. Billions of government dollars were spent in this direction. Many of these activities were not only unwarranted, but of questionable legality. The congressional hearings into the assassination of Dr. King bore this out. Two FBI agents testified before a Senate committee chaired by Senator Frank Church. I'm trying to find out what it was that impelled the, some part of the FBI to pursue Martin Luther King with such an obsession. And what I understood that answer to be is, first of all, it was not any suspicions of the commission of a federal crime. None of the literature showed up a single suggestion that Martin Luther King had committed or was about to commit a crime. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes, sir, but at this point, much of what was being done did involve challenges to local laws. And there is a very strong suggestion that King was seen as rallying the lawbreakers and would-be lawbreakers, albeit for a cause that, that, that sounded pure. I'm looking now in terms of, if we look at what might have gotten the Bureau started, and if we remember at the same time he is extremely critical of the Bureau's own law enforcement efforts, we see throughout these documents and the New Left documents that it is taboo to criticize the Bureau right. and particularly the Director. Well, did he ever, was he ever charged with uh, fomenting violence? Did he, ever, did he ever participate in violence? Was it ever alleged that he was about to be violent? That was no. the very opposite of his philosophy, Senator. So that it, it was neither the fear of commission of a crime or the commission of violence was there any serious charge that he himself was a communist? No such charge ever was made. So that what was left then was a decision on the part of some persons or person within the FBI that he should nevertheless be pursued. And replaced. And the basis for that apparently was political. The decision that he was dangerous or potentially dangerous to someone's notion 
of what uh, this country should be doing, and a further theory that the FBI possessed the ability to enter into this field and to investigate and to intimidate and seek to neutralize and indeed replace a civil rights leader that they thought to be uh, politically uh, unacceptable. Uh, Is that correct? Yes. Correct. All right. And the tactics they used apparently uh, had no end. Um, microphonic uh, surveillance of hotel rooms. They included um, informants. They included um, sponsoring of uh, letters uh, signed by phony names to relatives and friends and organizers. They involved even plans to replace him with someone else the FBI was to select as a national civil rights leader. Is that correct? Yes, that plan uh, was didn't get very yeah, far. But, but it was seriously considered, and Mr. Hoover penned a note to that suggestion, uh, commending its authors. Did they not? Yes. Sorry. It also included um, a direct, uh, an indirect attempt to persuade the Pope not to see him. And many other people. A direct attempt to persuade uh, one of our major universities not to grant him a doctorate degree. That's correct. Uh, after the March on Washington, there was an acceleration. He was defined because of his speech in that demonstration in Washington as the most dangerous and effective leader in the country. And there was a paper battle between within the Bureau as to how best to attack him, and he was attacked. Uh, after Time Magazine named him as Man of the Year, again, the Bureau finds that reprehensible, believes it must attack and destroy. Uh, when he was given the Nobel Prize, again, they seek to discredit Dr. King with the persons who welcomed him back from that award. Uh, when he began to speak out against the Vietnam War, there's a new crescendo of efforts by the Bureau to discredit and destroy Dr. King. It is my uh, feeling that the assassination of Dr. King was a part of a conspiracy uh, in the country, and I do believe that uh, some individuals in very high places of our government were involved in this conspiracy. And it is the same conspiracy uh, that eliminated and destroyed President Kennedy, Senator Kennedy, uh, Malcolm X, Medgar Evers, uh, and so many other freedom and human rights individuals. I'm convinced the government was involved at some level. Uh, I will never separate the conduct, the attitude of Hoover and the FBI from Dr. King's assassination. I never will do that. I think one of the most important things that come out in that investigation was that Martin Luther King in Memphis was in a white hotel, and the FBI admitted that they leaked to the press that Dr. King was staying in a white hotel instead of a black hotel, and it was that embarrassment that forced Dr. King to move into the Lorraine Hotel of where he was killed. There are more questions regarding the FBI's role in the assassination of Dr. King. For example, why was Dr. King stripped of his protection just before he was killed in Memphis? A... Reporter Les Payne and myself interviewed police officer Ed Reddit of the Memphis Police Department, who told how he was mysteriously removed from his security post near Dr. King. However, later, his superior, Chief Holloman, denied doing so. Why do you feel you were pulled uh, away from your assignment of surveillance that day? Why, why do you think they pulled you away? I think because whoever pulled the trigger, I could identify When there were complaints from somebody, did we reduce manpower at the Lorraine? Did we reduce manpower in no. the area? No, no. The Attorneys General in 1965 had for 25 years authorized uh, wiretaps in a fairly widespread fashion. This was just one. 
at, at the very most, the only thing I can think of that I would have done, but I didn't even do that, was go talk to Bob Kennedy and, and uh, ask him about it. But uh, Mr. Katzenbach, in whom I also had great confidence, um, um, without giving me the details, uh, said that it was all right, that he had, um, that there were no, it was not being done anymore, it would not be done anymore, and that uh, there was just nothing to worry about. I think the issue is the neo-fascist police state mentality that pervaded the intelligence community that uh, is a danger to America to this day.